Megan Lynn Shear uh, will be presenting your service today. Steve Israel and Lynn Israel are handling streaming here with us, as well as Lisa Merrill Price and Kelly McCready are providing technical assistance at home. Uh, and Lynn Israel is our music coordinator this week. Thank you all so much for tuning in today for our live streaming service in light of the social distancing needed for reducing the spread of COVID-19. We are glad that we can keep in touch and support our community, even if we can't be together in person. If you'd like an order of service, please look in the comments on the video or see the email that was sent this morning. We seek inspiration and meaning from a great many faith traditions and philosophies. We support each other's lifelong spiritual journey and we encourage work for justice and peace. We value open minds and loving hearts. Here, may our minds stretch, our hearts open, and our spirits deepen. Please take a moment to think of all your friends at NVUC. Greet them with a comment on Facebook, and remember that you can still reach out to them via email, phone, social media, or video chat. Physical distancing does not need to mean emotional distancing. Let us support one another. Visitors, as we are a, diver a diverse group with varying interests and beliefs, our services are varied in format, tone, and topic. We encourage you to attend or view several services to gain a good, good congregation. If you'd like to receive our weekly email newsletter, please email us at news at mvuuc.org. MVUC remains committed to supporting our members and friends during this difficult time of social distancing. For that reason, we are coordinating assistance with groceries, phone calls, and other needs. If this sounds like something that would be helpful to you, please send an email to sac at mvuc.org. That's S as in Sam, A as in Apple, C as in cat, at mvuc.org. With your name and what kind of assistance you would like to request. Now is the time for announcements. If you have an announcement, please add it as a comment on the Facebook Live video, and we will read them aloud. Our first announcement is, we are sad to announce that our blood drive scheduled for April 4th, 2020 has been canceled due to a lack of staff available. We encourage you to find another drive to donate to as the need is critical. We plan to still have our next scheduled drive on July 11th, 2020. We hope you will plan to donate at MVUC then. Thank you for your donations. All right, I'm gonna move on. Our chalice today. Our chalice will be lit by Lynn Israel. Please join me in reading the words for the chalice lighting that appear as a comment on the Facebook Live video or in your OOS, which is also posted as a comment on the video. Let this light remind us that those who contemplate the beauty of the earth find reserves of strength that will endure as long as life lasts. Hi everyone, I'm Megan, and uh, the opening words for today are um, a poem called Song of Spring by the Persian Sufi poet Hafez. 
So Hafez, whose name was much longer than just Hafez, as I said, was a Persian Sufi poet who lived from 1320 to 1389 Common Era. And like other Sufi poets, Hafez wrote from the viewpoint of one who is intoxicated with love for the divine, whom he refers to as the beloved. But he also suffers because of his separation from the divine. And for that reason, his poetry dwells on themes of wine drinking, intoxication, love, longing, and living life to its fullest, enjoying the beauty of the earth and the splendor of the divine. He also refers to himself in the third person during the poem. So here is Song of Spring by Hafez. The gentle breeze will blow anew vitality to the barren earth. The old will become young. Persian lilacs will offer the white lily their fragrant red cup. The narcissus eye will glimpse the anemone. Because of the tyranny of separation endured, the nightingale shall speed into the rose garden, bursting with song. If I've left the mosque for the tavern, don't complain. The ceremonies stretch on far too long, and time is short. Heart, if you deposit today's joy for tomorrow, you may be left with nothing, for who will guarantee it? In the month before the fast, drink your fill of wine, for this sun too will set. In Ramadan, these will be out of sight. The rose's beauty is very dear. Enjoy its petals when it is here. As soon as it comes, it is gone. Minstrel, for this feast of love, sing reality. No more chatter of the past, nor of the future now. Hafez has made the journey to life for you. Bid him fond adieu, for soon in death his passing he shall be. So now let's sing together hymn number 61, Lo, the Earth Awakens Again.
quote. Um, on this brilliant spring morning, I don't know if anybody's gotten a chance to go outside yet, but it's very warm and sunny and very windy. So I'm happy that this reflection about the celebrations of spring uh, is happening on an appropriately spring-like day. So this past Thursday, March 19th, marked the vernal equinox, when both the northern and southern hemispheres experience an equal amount of daylight. Equinox literally means equal night, meaning the length of the day is equal to the length of the night. Technically speaking, the equinox occurs when the sun is directly in line with the equator. For those of us in the northern hemisphere, it marks the beginning of spring, as the daylight hours continue to lengthen until the summer solstice in June. But humans are fairly imp impatient creatures by nature, so cultural celebrations of spring tend to take place well in advance of the vernal equinox. Very likely, these rituals began as human efforts to ensure that the celestial rebalancing and eventual return of longer daylight hours would take place. The regularity and age of these rituals is a testament to the, the symbolic, as well as the biological, importance of spring to human communities throughout time. I'd like to share a few descriptive examples of the many celebrations of spring from around the world. Of course, any place or culture that has been influenced by Christianity has some variation on the carnival celebration, which took place at the end of February this year. Whether you call it Shrove Tuesday or Mardi Gras or simply carnival, this event was intended as a last hurrah before the austere season of Lent. However, it's easy to see how these celebrations are also closely tied to the anticipation of spring as an expression of joy at having survived another winter and an outpouring of life-affirming rapture and an embrace of the earthly pleasures that make life worth living. In, the, uh, in Bulgaria, in Southeast Europe, the first of March is celebrated with shouts of Chestita Baba Marta, which means Happy Grandmother March and the wearing of red and white ornaments called Martinitsa. So in Bulgarian folklore, Baba Marta is a mythical figure who brings with her the end of the cold winter and the beginning of spring. Baba Marta is believed to be a grumpy old lady whose moods swing very quickly and it reflects in the changeable March weather. The belief was that when she was smiling, the weather was sunny and warm. So I guess Baba Marta is smiling today. But if she got angry, the cold would stay longer. By wearing the red and white colors of the Martinitsa, which symbolize purity and vitality, so white symbolizes purity, red symbolizes vitality, our predecessors asked Baba Marta for mercy. They hoped that it would make winter pass faster and bring spring. Bulgarians tr traditionally wear the Martinitsa until they see a sign of spring, like a flower or a specific bird. And in Bulgaria, that bird is a stork. And when they see that sign of spring, they take off the Martinitsa from their wrist and they hang it on a flowering tree. Now, on March 9th and 10th in India, celebrated the beginning of spring with Holi which is spelled H-O-L-I. Holi is an ancient Hindu festival that is marked by parades, folk songs, and a tradition practiced mostly by teenagers of throwing colored powder at each other as a sign of affection. Again, the colors have symbolic meanings. Blue represents the god Krishna. Red represents love and fertility. Green symbolizes spring, and new growth, and yellow is the color of turmeric, a spice native to India and a natural remedy, which I think a lot of you already know. 
I'd like to walk you through one more celebration of spring that is less well known in our part of the world, but also has a few surprising similarities to more familiar spring festivals, such as Easter. So Noruz, pronounced Noruz, uh, which literally means new day in Persian, but is commonly described as Persian New Year, is a spring holiday that is celebrated throughout the Middle East and Central Asia. It falls on the spring equinox and celebrations last for 12 days. So it's still happening right now. The reason no ruse is often called Persian New Year is that it was thought to originate in ancient Persia, what we would now call the country of Iran. Originally, no ruse was considered a Zoroastrian holiday. So that's a long word, Zoroastrianism. And Nowruz was originally a Zoroastrian holiday. And this ancient Zoroastrian religion, named for its main prophet, Zoroaster, was a, founded approximately 3,500 years ago and was one of the first, if not the first, monotheistic religion. The basic philosophy of Zoroastrianism is based on duality between good and evil, light and dark, creation and destruction. This duality operates both cosmically through opposing forces within the universe and morally through opposing forces within the mind and the individual spirit. It teaches that mankind is ultimately good and that this goodness will finally triumph over evil. Zoroastrians believe that the elements are pure and that fire represents light or wisdom of the divine. Of course, the Iran of today is very different from the ancient Persia of Zoroaster, but millions of people all over the country of Iran and throughout the world have celebrated Nowruz both before and after the 1979 revolution that changed the government of Iran to an Islamic theocracy. According to CNN, more than 300 million people worldwide celebrate Nowruz and have done so for over 3,000 years. So during Nowruz, every Iranian home will have what's called a haftzin set up inside their home. So haftzin literally means seven S's and it stands for um, seven items that are supposed to be included in this half scene table or display and the seven items are um, the, the words for each of these seven items each start with the letter s so the seven s's and i introduce you to those seven s's right now the seven items that every proper half scene should have included in it so let's try this together so repeat after me half scene awesome Okay, so the first S of the half scene is sabze, which means green, literally, but um, sabze is lentil sprouts that grow in a dish and they symbolize rebirth, okay? So not only does every item start with S, but every item has a, a symbolism behind it. So the lentil sprouts represent rebirth and regrowth. The second S is samanu, which is a sweet pudding. And samanu uh, symbolizes affluence, so wealth in the new spring season. The third S is senjed, which is the dried fruit of the oleaster tree, which we don't really have here in the United States, but it's very common in Iran. Uh, senjed represents love. So we might not have the dried fruit of the oleaster tree around here, but a very similar fruit would be dried dates. And if you think of the sweetness of dates and the sweetness of love, there you have the symbolism of senjed. Four more, okay, seer. Seer is garlic and seer represents medicine. So if you eat a lot of garlic, you're probably pretty healthy. And uh, that is the idea behind including seer in the half scene. Seeb. So I haven't had you pronounce all of these. Let's try this one. Seeb. Seeb means apple. And because apples are red, and red is considered a very good color during Noruz, it, the, the redness of the apple represents health and beauty. 
So you've heard the phrase, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, here you go. Somac, you might have heard of sumac, so this is the same idea. Sumac berries are also red. Red is a very good color. And so the somac, which is red, represents the red of the sunrise. So all of this uh, redness is considered very good and very lucky. And then finally, cerque. Try that, cerque, which means vinegar. And vinegar represents age and patience because vinegar requires a lot of time to be created. So um, remembering the importance of age and patience in this new spring season. Now th those are the seven main S's of the Haftzin, but other symbols of good luck can be placed on the Haftzin table, such as a mirror, to reflect the light of wisdom and creation, a book of poetry, especially by the Sufi poet Hafez, who we heard before, whose poems are believed to predict the future, or a goldfish in a bowl that represents new beginnings. So you can include all of these things on your Haftzin table. Now, after 13 days, the um, the day of Sidé Bedar. Sidé Bedar is celebrated where the sprouts that you've been growing on your Haftzin table are thrown into a river or lake, and the, th the sprouts are thought to absorb all the negative energy from each home, and when you throw them in the river, you get rid of that negative energy and you ensure good luck for the coming year. So that's your introdu uh, introduction to Noru's. You know, maybe at home you want to set up your own half scene table just for fun. Um, but you know, more spring festivals will be taking place in the near future. Passover begins on April 8th. Easter will be on April 12th. And in Japan, the Sakura cherry blossom season began last week with the full bloom of cherry trees in Tokyo and will last until early May. So. We're not done celebrating. And I hope that even as many of us are spending more time indoors, out of care and concern for each other, you can still celebrate the arrival of spring in small ways. Watching the squirrels play outside your window, listening to the sounds of birds, seeing the return of bright green in the grass and buds growing on the trees, and hopefully stepping outside to feel the sun and the return of warmth. Even in a time of social distancing, we can connect to each other on a fundamental level through a shared celebration of spring. Okay, I guess I'll just go into the UU connection here. So um, what does all this have to do with the UU principles? Celebrations of spring around the world recognize the common human experience of anticipating and celebrating spring. Although these traditions come from diverse places and peoples, they serve as a reminder of how closely connected we all are to the natural world and the cosmos beyond, part of the interdependent web of all existence that we strive to honor as UUs. Just as human communities around the world mark the coming of spring with various cultural practices, the larger community of life on Earth marks the transition of seasons in its own ways. Buds and flowers appear on the trees, sprouts shoot up from the ground, birds migrate north, and hibernating creatures reemerge from their dens. Because we are all inhabitants of the same planet, we all respond to the way that planet changes, the way it tilts on its axis, the way tectonic plates periodically shift, the way that weather patterns respond to a warming climate. It reminds us that we are all a part of a community of life on Earth, that we are all connected in fundamental ways, down to our very molecules. As Carl Sagan wrote in his seminal work, Cosmos, Quote, every life form on Earth has a different set of instructions written out in essentially the same language. The same patterns are employed over and over again, conservatively, 
ingeniously for different functions. And at the very heart of life on Earth, the proteins that control cell chemistry and the nucleic acids that carry the hereditary instructions, we find these molecules to be essentially identical in all the plants and animals. An oak tree and I are made of the same stuff. If you go far enough back, we have a common ancestor." End quote. There's a phrase in the Lakota language that encapsulates this co uh, concept of common ancestry and interconnectedness, and the phrase is mitakuya oyasin, mitakuya oyasin, which means all my relations. The idea that we are not only related to our immediate relatives, but also to our extended human family and to the larger community of the natural world around us. What affects one of us affects us all in ways that are both immediately noticed and barely recognized. Mitakuya Oyasin also resonates very closely with our own seventh principle, to recognize and respect the interdependent web of all existence. So let me, in closing, invite you again to greet the spring season with the awareness of your connection to the world around you, to feel wonder at the ways that the human plant and animal worlds respond to the lengthening days and warmer weather, and to remember how much we share in common with all our relations. Please join us now as we sing hymn number 21 for the beauty of the earth. before we sing this, Sam Maccabee at home said the piano was a little quiet on the last song we did together. So I'm gonna try turning up the volume on the piano and hopefully we'll get the balance right. Uh, let us know online if, if this works out well. like to share a quote from Edward Felsenthal before I sing. He's the editor of Time magazine. He says, 
This virus is a new reality we are all adjusting to that will continue to create challenges and require collaboration, courage, and empathy. And the song that I've chosen today to sing today reminds us that we are all in this together. It's entitled The Oneness of Everything and was written by Jim Scott, a wonderful UU musician who lives on the East Coast and who presented a concert at MVUUC last year. The song is included in our new hymnal, Singing the Journey, and speaks to the seventh UU principle, which affirms respect for the interdependent web of existence of which we are a part. So here are our closing words for today, titled, In This Time of Anticipated Spring, by Teresa Cooley. In this time of anticipated spring, let us allow ourselves to extend the anticipation, to value the time of budding before blooming, seeding before sprouting, 
This is a time of revelation, the revealing of that which is eternal, which we see every year, but still need to be reminded to see in a new way. There is also the revelation of that which is new. Every spring we encounter something never before seen. It is that very newness which embodies hope and potential for the wholeness which is yet to be. Let us allow spring to unfold slowly that we may appreciate the true mystery of rebirth and renewal. So to extinguish the chalice, would you like to? Please join me in reading the words for extinguishing our chalice that can be found as a comment on the Facebook Live video or in the order of service. Um, let's go. May we be blessed by our connection to one another and may we prove worthy of it. We've moved the offertory to the end of our service because when you click on the PayPal link um, provided in the Facebook um, comment section, uh, you, of you often will lose the connection to the live feed. Um, we are still counting on your pledge payments and donations to help sustain and strengthen this congregation that is so important to all of us, supporting our efforts to be a community of love, truth, justice, and service. So after the service, please feel free to um, continue discussing the service topic and the comments on Facebook, and then please click on the PayPal link to donate. And now let us sing our closing song, Go With a Song in Your Heart. You can find the words as a comment on the video uh, or in the order of service. Um, yeah. <laughs> Go with music in your soul. Leave with the memory. 